So I'd like to call to order the Town Building Advisory Committee for the 1st of November 2021 at 3 p.m. Um, we do have a quorum present. In fact, we have the entire committee present. Um, I'm Julie Chalfant. I'm the chair. We have Greg Franceschi, Carol Morrow, John Paturic, and Kevin Scarborough is ex officio member present. And I had hoped that Dave Wolfram would be able to join us. Um, so maybe we will stall. Unfortunately, that's the thing you're most interested in. So <laughs> I assume you're here because of the, the discussion of the, the old church building and the grammar school building and all of that. Okay. Um, we'll just stall for a couple minutes on that and um, come back to it if he doesn't join us. Um, Oh, shoot. I didn't print out previous minutes. Oh. The first thing on the agenda was previous minutes. Let me get them open. So we last met in July. Yes. Um, and I can share them up here, I think. John, I'll make a motion that we approve the July 29th, 2021 minutes as printed. All right. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. Um, any discussion? Can you guys see those? Can I make them there? Any discussion? No. Okay. Um, since we're hybrid, we have to do a roll call vote. Um, so you just say. Aye. Um, so you have to say Greg Franceschi. Greg Franceschi. Julie Chalf and I. Carol Morrow, aye. John Pachork. John Pachork, aye. Kevin Scarborough. Non voter. I think you have to abstain. You weren't there. Okay. So that passes 4 0. Zero. All right, so we're done with that. Um, the other items, I'm gonna skip down to item number three, which is collective community initiative. I'm not convinced 100% that that's what CCI stands for, but it's something along those lines. What this is, is a, um, um, the town would like to set priorities for the um, the major capital projects that are coming. And there's thought that all sorts of different community um, committees are looking at different pieces of us, TBAC being a big part of that. Um, and all of those committees should be um, communicating. And if the communities all get together, we should all be able to communicate and come up with a prioritized list and a plan of attack for these major projects that are coming. So it's going to include town building advisory, finance committee, capital improvement committee, uh, planning committee. I'm not sure who else, but it'll be sort of a, a super committee group. And each of those committees are asked to send at least one representative to this larger group to participate in those discussions. Um, I think the first meeting for that will be mid-November sometime. Um, I haven't gotten an official notification yet, but I know that um, Denise Mason has been tasked with pulling together that first meeting. Um, so when I, I am the representative from the Finance Committee who's been chosen to go. Um, we as a committee should pick someone to go as well. Um, the same person can represent two committees, but we can also send another person from this committee if we would like to do that. Um, do you all have any thoughts on that? I'd like to participate in that. Sounds great. Okay. Timely. Mm -hmm. The Energy Committee was one of the other committees. Oh, yep. Good one. All right. I can participate too if need be. 
Okay. I think we just need one person. Yeah, I think probably. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so I think the thought is like if if everybody on all the committees go, then there's way too many people, people to even there. have a discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I'm. It's an open public meeting, so anybody can go and listen. Um, and then participate. I'm fine with going yeah. and listening. If you want to be the representative, that would be good. <laughs> no, that's okay. You volunteered first, Greg, so you can. Okay, whatever. Okay. Um, so I, I guess I'll make a motion that Greg Franceschi be the representative from TBAC mm -hmm. to this group. A second. A second. Any discussion? John or Kevin, you have any thoughts? No, I'm all about it. I think it's fine. Yeah. Yep. That's they've fair. already they've already tapped into okay. me for other areas. <laughs> I figured you were going to be involved, Kevin. Um, all right. So I made the motion. Carol seconded. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. Let's do a roll call vote. John Petork, aye. Carol Morrow, aye. Julia Chalf and I. All right, so that passes four zero zero. Um, I guess since um, David isn't here, I unfortunately am not as up to speed. May Kevin and y'all may have better information, but I'll give my quick understanding then y'all can fix it you can you can fix it for me so my understanding is that um, the senior sense the the old grammar school building where the senior center has been for a while has some serious maintenance problems and it has water in the basement and it has mold and it's got some some real issues and the senior center cannot go back in there right now so um, the Catholic Church in town has agreed, I believe, that the senior center can locate in there using their space um, once it's too cold to be in the tent outside anymore for some period of time, but it's not by any means a permanent fix. It's kind of a short-term thing. Then Deerfield is going to look at whether the old congregational church building can be upgraded for a temporary home for the senior center, temporary on the order of a couple of years. Um, and then since there won't be anybody in the old grammar school building, that building we want to look at for the possibility of pretty much gutting it and redoing it entirely. And then the, but the eventual use of that building is not determined yet. It might be that the town hall moves in there. It might be that senior center goes back in there. I think that that piece is still a little up in the air. And then depending on whether town hall or senior center goes in there, this building gets looked at for either renovation or tear down a new building going up. So Kevin, can you fix that for me? Was I close? I think you were like spot on. Um, the only, there was a couple of things that I'm not sure about. Um, I know that there was a little hiccup in the giddy up as far as getting the seniors over to the other as far as it was some kind of signatures that had to be going back and forth between the diocese. I do not know what the status of that is. Um, like you said, the tent is still there. They 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 have to get out because it's just too cold. My understanding is the tent's coming down tomorrow, and tomorrow my guys will be going by there pick up the tables and the chairs. Um, I think you're spot on as far as the church is concerned. Um, my understanding is, is is this last meeting that we had, we were authorized for $150,000 for for repairs to get it to allow the senior center to enter. Um, the church, like you said, as a temporary, um, and then yeah, and no idea what's going to happen with the old uh, grammar school. 
no idea what's going to happen with town hall. You know, that's none of those have really been nailed down. longer term. Yeah. But no, you, you, you hit it. Okay. Um, Chief Paturic or John Paturic, do either of you have an update? You were involved somewhat in making some estimates, right? I don't know what the, uh, is currently going on because we are going to volunteer a couple of us to do some electrical work so that they could get into the senior center or into the church they were going to use the back portion and the side portion. The main portion of the church inside is not going to be utilized at all. And what we did was we made out a list of things that we could do. For example, changing exit lights, emergency lights, and make sure everything was safe and sound, even though it's not a tube wiring in there. And since then, I found out that they had a group come in through Deerfield Academy price out the whole thing. So I don't know where it stands right now. I just have no idea. Okay. So we're trying to set up a meeting this Wednesday with the Deerfield Academy folks to figure that out with David, Casey, Kevin, myself. Uh, I'm just waiting for a response back to see if Deerfield Academy can meet with us, at which point we will be looking at Bruce and uh, my father to do the electrical work over there. And then uh, we've got to work with Casey and others as the chief procurement officer to make sure that we don't get into any type of um, legal gray area with bid splitting or other issues as we work out the project moving forward. So we want to try and do as much as we can um, being legal the entire time. So all of us uh, hopefully can get in the same room Wednesday and possibly work this out. I'm just waiting for an email back from Deerfield Academy and if I don't have one by tomorrow morning with the three emails I've already sent them, I will start sending some text messages. Hmm. Go pound on the door, John. What's up? So just go pound on the door. I will do that if the text messages are not <laughs> responded to. Yep. Um, just to kind of tap into what John just said, if I could. Um, my general understanding is, is it's great um, that those guys are volunteering their time to assist my general understanding, I could be completely wrong, but it's the town cannot solicit volunteers. If we do, then that brings us to one of the gray areas. Um, and that's probably about as far as I will go with that. We're not allowed to solicit volunteers. People come to us, that's a different story, but we can't ask for help that way. Okay. So what I had hoped with, um, and maybe I'll reach out to Dave Wolfram again and see, the question I had for him is what can this committee do in order to support this whole process? Um, it sounds like you all have it under control and are moving forward um, mm -hmm. with the, as under control as it is. Um, So I feel like this is, I, I think TBAC is a little bit longer term and we look more at, at planning. Um, so I feel like right now we don't have a role to play in this immediate, like where you're gonna go, where the senior center is gonna go as far as the current Catholic church or the old, this is getting confusing with so many church buildings. <laughs> the old um, congregational church building. Um, right? Yeah, I think where the role of our, our committee plays is uh, a much larger role with every committee out there and every resident out there. It's a common vision for the town as a whole. And then putting the pieces of the puzzle together to make that vision happen. So. And I think that's yeah. where the collected community initiative is uh, is coming into place, where we want everybody in the same room to figure out what do the residents want? What do we wanna see the town in five, 10, 15 years? And then let's develop our roadmap and make it happen. We've gone through this many times before, and then all of a sudden, one or two things bogs us down and our wheels start spinning in the mud and people just walk away and get frustrated. So, um, one of my qualities is I'm extremely persistent. And that's why the select board constantly taps me 
because I don't walk away. Even when things get bad or they go sideways or they go south, we've got to continue to progress forward. So when we look back in five or 10 years, all the residents are in a better place. All right, which is a good segue to our next item. But before we get to that, does anybody have any, open it up for public comment, does anybody have any questions or comments? No. Okay. Hey, this is Matt Russo. Um, and I apologize. This is the first time joining this committee. So if I'm off base, feel free to let me know. But, you know, $150,000 to temporarily fix part of a building that may or may not really suit our needs. Have we looked at you know, maybe the Polish club for long-term lease. I know when Waitley bought their town hall, they had a bunch of space over there. I just hate to throw good money after bad, even if it's a temporary fix for only two or three years, when there might be other options are already suited for, for what we're looking for. And if you guys have already explored that, I understand, and I apologize for asking the question. Well, I don't think there's any apology needed, first off. Hello, Matt. Welcome. Hey, Kevin. Um, my general understanding, I could be wrong, you know, the boo needs to, would need to pop in on this, but my, my general understanding is, is they have gone around to different places and the seniors really, to be honest with you, the, my understanding is the seniors really don't want to leave where they're at right now. And if they're going to go someplace, they're going to go next door. That's it. My understanding again was, is, you know, Waitley offered up some space and, and, um, you know, they talked about the Polish club, but they they just kind of persistent upon what they would like. I, I don't know. I, I understand what you're saying. 100%. Yeah, I mean, and I'm betting more than half of the seniors are members of the Polish club anyhow. So it's, it, you know, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's not like we're asking them to go 12 miles away. I mean, right. I know it's a little further down the street, but if you made a left at the center of the town instead of right, it, it's still about the same distance. I mean, we're talking two blocks. All right, great. That would, that would be more of a, a the boo. Um, they're the ones that, that dictate it. I mean, because obviously it's it's the three towns. Sure. So that yep. they, would, they would be the ones that would actually have to make those decisions. You know, what we're looking at is, is and, and I'm not trying to step on your toes, Julie. Um, it just seems like what, what we're here for is, is we look at the buildings and what their uses are going to be. The politics that goes behind that um, is not our charge. Is that okay. a good way of putting it? Yeah, actually. And um, Matt, I've written your comment down and we'll pass that back. Dave Wolf, from, from my understanding, is kind of taking the lead on this, but we'll pass that back to them and the, um, the Board of Oversight for the Senior Center. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, it's, it's going to go back into a much larger discussion about the viability of the church. And I think it, it's, as Matt's yeah. getting into, it's a question of do we put money into a viable building or do we not? And that's an em extremely emotionally charged issue, depending on which yeah. side you lie. Mm -hmm. Jennifer has her hand up. Question. We have one more question online, and then we have a question in the audience here. So Jennifer, go ahead. Hi, I'm Jennifer from Millard Conway Street. Um, in viewing some of the Board of Oversight Committee uh, meetings, um, it it seems to be shared amongst the other two communities, Waitley and Sunderland, that support the Senior Center as well as Deerfield. Um, I, I was pretty. Um, it was pretty clear that they were looking at the um, John Pope or John Paul II Center is where they're looking to move everything at this temporary junction and to determine where they're going and what they're doing with, um, you know, if they're going to move into this other location, the church, even though that money was voted on at the town meeting, um, it's, it's gonna be put aside at this point. So while I understand Matt's concern for whether or not that money is going to be distributed and spent on those temporary repairs. There are some repairs that need to be done in the steeple area um, to stop the water. And I think Pete Thomas is working with you, Kevin, mm -hmm. on that yep. um, for a historical aspect. Um, I'm watching because of the, I'm on the historic commission. Um, you know, we are curious to see where this was going to be going. But the other pieces too is if 
um, Chair Wolfram for the select board decides to, you know, just renovate the building based upon whether or the grammar school building based upon whether or not the town can get the insurance claim uh, move forward on, you know, there's different aspects with that and then to move the seniors back into that facility. I would um, want to wrap on that, by the way. Oh, I, I would, I'm sure. I, I know. Insurance companies insurance. are not very conducive to many things, right. but I think um, that's also one of the objectives with the uh, Connecting Community Initiative, the CCI, is to look at the larger projects moving forward, like Chief Pachorek mentioned, um, you know, coming together and setting the vision as to where the community is going to be going. Um, and coming up with a cohesive plan that the majority of the community, um, you know, wants to have happen. Um, so, but I, I can tell you from listening um, that the other members from Waitley and Sunderland of the Board of Over, um, Oversight Commission there for the Senior Center, um, you know, really didn't want a temporary fix other than maybe using the John Paul, or John, sorry, John, the Pope, Thing. This church, the church. on Sugarloaf. Um, Sugarloaf Street Church. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The Catholic, Roman Catholic Church, not the other one. Thanks, Jennifer. Julie? Um, you had a question? Uh, Maria, I actually had a comment more than a question. I don't feel the 150000 to go into the church is that big of a deal. We moved to the other church this morning and Sue has to carry everything there. She can't leave anything there other than coffee. Um, so she has she's trying to do work here and work there and that's what they want. They're also going to take, I'm not sure what, some kind of stipend to the church. So even if we went to the Polish club, there's still that issue of Wi-Fi, of phone, of equipment, and I don't think 150000 is that bad to save two years. We know if it comes down to looking for money, we're talking three to five years, mm -hmm. and I don't think that's a whole lot to put our seniors in one spot big. Okay. That's an excellent point about having to carry the stuff down and back every day, you know, to access it. You know, that is Anybody one of the advantages. Else? Sorry. Go ahead. That's the advantage of going to, to the church next door is um, uh, you can leave the stuff there. You know, um, actually, that was going to be the next thing I was going to talk about. And she, she took it right out. And she's completely right. I mean, like you said, the only thing you can go back and forth with is or keep there is basically a coffee machine, um, you know, because they're they're gracious enough to allow us there. Um, and it's not a home by any means. It's It's a a facility for a set amount of hours three days a week um and it, it's you know sue's still gonna end up having to work out of the existing um building as it is but again going next door into the senior center you know i i i, I agree with matt 110 percent about not throwing good money after bad but um for the seniors i think the 150,000 we've already voted for you know I, i've seen people spend stupid money on stupid things if we can get the seniors in there get them out from underneath the tent or someplace where they can actually call for a home it's not a permanent home by any means and i almost am embarrassed to give that as their temporary home but it's i feel personally it's better than the tent so that's my two cents Kevin, do you have, um, or can you give us some kind of a timeline on when when the seniors would be able to go into the church? Has, have estimates already been, you know, um, gotten and stuff? I mean, I don't know what the process is. I don't know who who gets the estimates and how it all flows and comes together. Can you kind of give us the lay of the land? Well, my basic understanding, and and uh, you know, Dave Wolfram has got you know a, a better thought process on how it's going to come about. And I know John's working on trying to work with DA to find out where we're at. Um, I can tell you that because of what we have to put out, it's gonna to have to go out to bid because of procurement issues. Um, the volunteers that come in, again, you have to be careful because that could be considered a split bid. So there's a lot of, a lot of things that are a little bit difficult to get through. Um, they haven't nailed down any contractors yet. We've got, you know, 
some estimates, but that's as far as it's gone. And the reason why is we haven't reached out too far for the simple fact we weren't sure which direction we're going. You know, we didn't want to go ahead and put all our eggs in a basket and go ahead and, and hammer on people and push them and get them locked in and then say, oh, oh yeah, no, never mind. Um, trying to find contractors right now is extremely difficult. You know, um, uh, the, the workforce just in a, isn't out there. So trying to get other people is difficult. Oh, perfect. Yeah, right there. Um, so these are different areas, you know, some of these things are, won't be too bad um, to be able to go ahead and, and put into play. You know, you, we did talk about, you know, $150,000 was the number that was put out there. Um, this right here, ballpark, they came up with $105,000 with a 10% uh, contingency put in there. So basically $116,000 is, is the ballpark estimate, you know, and they went with the Doc, $150,000. Can you zoom in a little bit to make that bigger? It's hard to see from here. Um, with that being said, um, you've got a lot of contingency in there. So to, to Matt's thought, I don't see 150 going in there, you know, maybe 120. Um, but again, these are these are all things that we, we need to go ahead and hunt people down for. Um, these are... Uh, Almost all of them require a license to do, you know, so you're looking at your electrical, your plumbing and things like that. You, you have to be able, you have to be licensed um, to do those types. Uh, you're talking your HVAC, your mini splits and stuff like that. That's nothing that just any voluntary can go ahead and do, you know, um, you know, the carpentry work. Um, again, it's, it's just going to take some time. You know, they want to do take one of the restrooms expand upon it and that that's going to be at least your one ADA compliant restroom go ahead and get get you get you through so you'll still have two more restrooms there that are usable but one will be dedicated as an ADA um you know again the the ramp isn't quite as bad I mean it, it shows a little bit more money I'm not sure if this is going to be a purchase or or a lease or or a borrow from someone or whatever but the handicap ramp would basically be on the southwest side of the building where it would actually go the length of the building going to um into the kitchen and that's where the entry would be uh, that would be the easiest cheapest way compared to taking out a window um and making it a door making different rampways um we feel this is probably the easiest quickest and um most cost effective uh, the wiring and stuff like that, I'm not really sure how deep they got into the wiring, um, you know, but there is, you know, obviously, like I said, the emergency exit lights. Um, as far as having to have sprinklers and sprinkler systems in there right now, no, because you're not moving. You have to be careful on how much you do to the building. If you go, if you go past a certain threshold, that everything has to be brought up 110%. Basically, you're talking um, sprinkler. Um, and, and any of the other requirements that the building inspector would require. So that's why I think they're trying to keep this down low, get them in there get them someplace where they can call home a temporary home and then finally make the decision on which direction they're gonna go. But these are the ballpark numbers where they're, they're looking at. So whoever put that up, thank you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Just let me know when you're done with it, Julie, and I'll take it down. I think we're good. Anybody have any any other questions on this topic? I have a question about the estimate. Um, the estimate that you had up, John, was for the senior center building, not for the church, right? So, for the church. Oh, okay. It's for the church to move the seniors in there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so everything is to do with the church. So, Correct. Because the monies were not authorized for the other building. So that There's estimate 100. is is one estimate that now has to be um, the whole process now is to go to bid and have three people, three different contractors bid on the same items. It depends on the cost. It depends on the cost. Uh, once you reach a certain threshold, you don't. You're not looking for three. You're you're putting out a request for a proposal or an RFP. Um, again, depending on this, the the dollar amount, it might have to go into the central register, which in turn goes out and gets publicized um, all over the Massachusetts. And then anybody has the ability to come in. And with doing that, if only one person comes in, 
that's all you need because you've done your due diligence of telling the world this is what you're looking for. So we'll, then, uh, we'll ultimately let Casey handle this as the chief procurement right. officer. What's generally going to happen is under $10,000, you follow best business practice, which means you can hire any contractor at whim. Okay, but you have to be able to justify that to the auditors after the fact. Generally, between ten and fifty thousand dollars, you have to solicit three quotes. The question becomes, from a bid splitting perspective, is from the carpentry, can we keep that under one, and can we do the HVAC plumbing under a different one? If the answer is yes, then obviously we're good to go. We can get a couple different companies in here, and we can ask for three quotes. We're not going to get this out of control. We're going to keep it very simple, very basic. Get the work done. Like Kevin said, at a certain point, once you hit a certain threshold, that's when all of us take a step back because now an architect is required to be involved. It goes out for an RFP and everything gets massive. We are trying our best to avoid that legally. That's why Kevin Casey is our chief procurement officer. Myself, the DA folks all need to be in a room, hopefully on Wednesday, to sort all this out, at which point we'll know a lot more moving forward. I know David's already spoken to our auditor and asked him straight up the best way to handle this legally. I'm kind of feeling like we need to just leave this with Casey as the procurement officer and not really go into it a lot more here because none mm -hmm. of us are um, procurement officers and I'd rather just leave it be and let it go on. Um, yep. so we'll be interested to hear from that meeting what happens. Um, yeah, we certainly can give you an update after once we develop a true plan forward. Cool, thanks. Um, any other questions on this process? Not that any of us have any answers, but yeah. okay. Um, let's move on to the next item on the agenda, um, which is numbers four and five together, kind of town capital improvements listing, maintenance schedule plan, and the charter and the way forward. Um, in the meetings I've been in talking about capital improvements for the town, one of the topics that keeps coming up is the capital, the CIPC, the Capital Improvement Planning Committee, by the bylaws is required to come up with an annual listing of capital improvements for the upcoming five years. So this year plus four more years. And all of the departments um, and everybody in town is supposed to submit items for that listing and they're supposed to come up with a listing and they're doing a great job with the information that they have. But there seems to also be a desire for kind of a longer term look at things like Here's our buildings that we own as a town. You know, we kind of expect to need a new roof on this building this year and a new roof on that building that year. And maybe, you know, at some point we're going to have to replace that, that sort of much longer term, rougher estimate of, not estimate, but sort of list of things that we see coming. Um, that is something that could fall within the purview of this committee. So I guess the question is, is that something we would be interested in taking on? Um, and um, I would like you to take it on or us <laughs> to take it on. Because if, okay. if you don't, it lands all on my shoulders and I can use all the help I can use for this, to be honest with you. Um, okay. You know, I, the, you're, you're spot on with this, you know, very similar. Uh, John knows South Deerfield Fire District. You know, we, we plan ahead. Um, we look at it. You know, when it came time for the new roof, we didn't have to go back to the um, um, the residents and ask more money. When it came time for the parking lot, we didn't have to go back to the residents and ask for any more money. Um, you know, we thought far enough ahead and and put money away for these things. You buy a brand new fire station, it's like, oh my God, you know, it, what are you doing putting money away for a parking lot and a roof? Well, this is why. You know, it, that way it doesn't hurt all at once. Um, and this is exactly what we need to do. I mean, uh, when they asked one for the equipment, fortunately for me, that was easy because, you know, most equipment's got a standard life. So I gave them a, a 27 year outlook on what they're going to need for equipment for the next 27 years. 
Um, but when it comes to buildings and stuff like that, you know, it's it's a different animal and I could definitely use all the help I could get. Please and thank you. <laughs> okay. Anybody else have thoughts on that? That makes sense. Um, I have a yeah, question for right. Kevin in terms of the ongoing maintenance for all the town buildings. How how is it determined? You know when you know when there's a problem. Say whatever. Like for instance, with the senior center, the old senior center building, there are some bricks that are literally you know falling out on one part of the building. When there's something like that, how does that? What are the steps to getting that to be fixed? Uh, basically, bring it to our attention. We go out, we look at it, we see is it going to affect the envelope of the building itself? It's not going to affect the envelope of the building, or it could do something to the inside. I'm on hold right now. Um, simple fact is, is exactly why we're all here is to find out what we're going to do. Because on Matt's thought process, I'm not, I don't want to throw good money after bad on something. Um, very similar, you know, I know the roof that goes to that hatchway going down into the basement. You know, um, as far as I'm concerned, that whole area right there is is condemned. Um, it's, but I'm not going to continue to just throw money at it, just to throw money at it to until a decision is made on what we're going to do. As long as it doesn't affect the whole of the building, where it would make it worse in the long run. I, I don't think I'm probably explaining this right, but. Um, This is Matt. Essentially, you need a list of the town's assets. Mm -hmm. As Kevin did with the equipment, you need a life expectancy on those assets. And then you need some type of a fund to provide for annual maintenance and upkeep of those assets. My observation in this town, we build, we go out, we spend all this money to build new, and then we don't take care of things the way they need to be taken care of. I'll give you an example. The high school track. We spend money, we buy a track. We put a track in 20 some years later, okay, we need a new track. One of my questions at the meeting is what are we doing for annual maintenance on that new track after we put it in? Nothing, we don't have any money budgeted for it. So we're gonna put a new track in, it's gonna get cracks in it, it's gonna get holes in it. And in 15 to 20 years, you're gonna be looking to replace it instead of going out there every year or two years, and I don't know the right number, and inspecting it, filling the cracks and making sure it's gonna last longer. No more than taking care of streets or anything else. We need to get to a point in this town where that money is set aside because otherwise what happens is we roll along, people lose sight of the fact that you need a, a wastewater treatment plant or we're gonna need a school in X number of years and everybody gets behind a project like a library and nothing against a library, but you know we're gonna look at spending eight to $10 million on a library and yes, the state will cover half of that. As a taxpayer, you still have to put out four or 5 million. Meanwhile, we've got other, we've got other assets in town that are crumbling because we haven't put the money into taking care of them. I mean, when I spoke with Kevin and, and John Pachurik at one point about the cleaning of the vents in, in town hall, and it had been, you know, I think Kevin, you can correct me. It was more than 10 years since we had the vents cleaned at town hall. You know, you wouldn't do that in your home. So these are the kind of things that we need to make sure if, if you get it on the board and you get a budget every year, like the South Deerfield Fire Department has done, People begin to understand it and they begin to accept it. Look, if you have an exceptional year and you need to push something down the road a year, you can do it. But at least you've got a better idea of what your finances are going to be year to year versus waiting for these enormous capital projects to come up, spending three or four years trying to get them passed. And then when we get them passed, we build it. We don't put any money away to take care of what's been built. Hey, Julie. Makes my point well. Go yeah. for it, Kevin. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any more room for Matt on the committee? <laughs> um, actually, yeah, we are down a person, aren't we? Yeah. Mm. Hey, Matt, buddy, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> Good idea. Give me a call oh, later. We'll talk. Bobby. Okay. So I handed out an agenda on the back of the agenda is the charter for the committee, um, which I will put up on the screen so I can find it. 
Ha, look at that. Chart, not charter. Sorry, wrong word. All right, let's share that. Come on, just a thing. Yes, I know it can see. All right, page one. There we go. All right. So this was our original charge back in 2018, um, and three years later we are still going. But this is, we were given, instead of a specific charge, we were given a list of tasks, and this is our list of tasks up here. Um, you can see that. And we were aimed pretty much at the old church and old grammar, the congregational church building and the old grammar school building. Um, and although we haven't come up with a specific, we're, I, I, we've come up with a lot of information, supporting information for the church and the grammar school building. And we did that building needs, uh, the assessment survey, and we did the building needs survey town of the town people. Um, so I think the last one there is probably what we're talking about, which is making a report for recommendations to the select board about making building committees for potential projects. Um, I can tell you what I'm thinking <laughs> and then see if you guys agree. Um, so do you remember Bruce Hunter came up with this um, Town of Deerfield building summary um, when, uh, let's see, pick here. I guess I need to stop sharing. All right, do you guys remember this? This became part of the RFP for that building assessment survey. But he went through each building and kind of put together a list of recent improvements and some information about the buildings and when they were last renovated and everything like that. So we have that. And then the other thing I have is um, there is a the auditors. The town external auditors put together a list every year of um, capital assets for the town. And that listing has all the buildings. It's got everything on it. It's got the buildings. It's got the land. It's got the police vehicles and the ambulance and sort of everything. Um, but what you can take away from that is you can see what improvements have been done to what buildings over the past few years. Um, I don't have that. So what I was thinking is we could use those two pieces of data and start to put together this listing that we're talking about of what our assets are and what upgrades and needs there are kind of long term for those buildings. Um, does, anybody, does that seem a reasonable way forward? I can forward that information. I don't feel like we can do that right now. Yeah. So I can mm -hmm. forward that information to everybody on the committee and we can sit and think about it for a while and then come back mm -hmm. in a couple weeks or a month or whenever um, and talk about that. Does that sound like a reasonable task for our committee given the tasking that we have for our committee? Any thoughts? I haven't seen it, but yes, I think that makes sense. I I to see what the... When was it done? When was what done? Um, his assessment. 18. Oh, this yes. 2018. Yep. It was in March 2019, oh, February, March, something like that, 2019. I think it was 2019. 
Is it? Oh, they have, the date has changed. Yeah, 2019. 2019. Mm -hmm. 2019 was when this was done. And then the other, that, the listing, the town capital listing is done every year. So we have that information. I'm not hearing arguments for or against. <laughs> Um, I started poking at it um, over the past week. I can send out the listing of all the upgrades and then the um, the list I started putting together and we can schedule another meeting and come back and talk about that. Um, I don't have building maintenance experience personally. So I'm not going to think up everything that needs to be done, and we don't want to create work for Kevin. Um, so um, and we can all put our effort into it. And maybe if there's, sounds like Matt has some ideas, maybe you would be willing to join us and help in this effort. And then I yeah, think I mean, if this, I'm sorry, Matt, good. I, I think it's something that should have been done years ago. I mean, the other benefit to all this is once you figure out what what you've done and what needs to be done, then you begin to gather up all those needs and two things. Number one, you begin planning for, all right, how many years out are we on getting some of these improvements done? But then you could also make Casey and her team aware of, here's what we're looking to do keep your eyes out if there are any grants that come across your desk or contact the Franklin Regional Council governments to say, here are some of the projects we've got coming up in the next couple of years. If there's some kind of grant that comes across the desk for HVAC improvement, we've got three buildings that we're looking to do this on and here's the approximate square feet. And, you know, you've got some of that so people know what they're looking for as opposed to either completely missing the opportunity or everybody kind of fumbling in the dark. Double ready projects. Yeah. That's a great comment, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Kevin, when you go to bid, you know, when you go out to bid to get these projects done, you, you might be able to push one one year and pull one in a year or two quicker to have a larger scope of work to get better pricing on it and have it all done at one time and then have similar components, it'll be easier to maintain down the line. Exactly, agreed. Okay. And I think the CIPC and the Finance Committee are in a good position to do planning for the finances of this, but you gotta start somewhere. <laughs> you need to yeah, they, they need the information. If they don't have the information, if they don't have the, 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 the dollar amount, they can't plan. So their hands are tied until we slash I provide the information to them. Okay. All right. So I will take an action item to email out this building summary that Bruce Hunter did and the capital list that comes from the auditor. And then my team. And then give us time to peruse that, and then we can come back and have kind of a working meeting where we go through and try and come up with a first stab at a list. That work? Um, mm -hmm. So for timing, this? oh my goodness, it's November. That happened to us. All right. So what are you guys' schedules like? I feel like we need some time with this like probably a month 
Yeah, I would say at least, yeah. There, there is quite a bit, there's a lot to be able to digest and try and be able to carve time out yeah. in a short amount of time. I think you'd be, you'd be forcing it, but I don't want to go too long um, because I try not to procrastinate. Personal opinion. Yeah, and we got the holidays coming up too, which kind of, I can't find the calendar to save my. So I have a question for yeah. Kevin. Kevin, I have a question for you. So does the town have a priority list on what needs to be done immediately? Yeah, I'd like a a plan for I mean, we seem to have our fingers in a lot of places. Mm -hmm. You do. know? Um is there is like there a, a, a plan path? No. I do not, I have not been giving a plan path. Well, I know I mentioned to Trevor the last time we met is I thought that, you know, the town needed to get that together in order. I mean, it's like taking care of your own, your own household. Mm -hmm. You make priorities and you can't do everything at once. And we have the sewer system, which is a big Big so pot of money. <laughs> the goal of this CCI thing mm -hmm. is exactly that, to come up with a prioritized list that we can go out. And but it, there's it. nothing. Nothing exists right now. No, basically I mean, it's, it, you go by, you see something that's wrong and it's like, okay, is it gonna, is it gonna affect the envelope of the building? Like a uh, prime example was six months ago, there was some shingles that were missing off of the church that's next to the um, uh, senior center. Uh, immediately we had somebody go up there and, and take care of it. Um, because, you know, obviously until they make a final decision on what they're gonna do with every time, every single building, um, you know, I don't wanna go and spend $10,000 on a roof or something and say, oh yeah, by the way, we're gonna tear that down next week. Um, you know, there has to be something that's, like you said, it's, it's clear, there's no confusion. Here's your list, this is what we're going to do. You know, is the is the list going to vary a little bit here and there? Yes, it will. But you know, you, you have to have a plan. It's it's like it's like diving. Plan your dive and dive. Your, you know, it, you you try not to make too many deviations in between, um, and then you get things mm -hmm. done. Otherwise, we're we're just kind of spinning their wheels. And again, I I really don't want to spend money on something that um, it, it's it's just a waste of money. Kevin, is, does each building, the way that it's set up now, is it structured that each building has a certain amount of money that's allocated for its maintenance, or is it one general fund, and as a problem comes up, it's addressed, you know, as quickly as it can be in whatever building? Well, basically, I've got about $20,000 to take care of all the buildings. That's that's town hall, senior center, um, the church, I've got a little bit of extra money on that one because of what it was. Um, highway department, I'm completely separated off. I'm not allowed to touch that money towards the highway. So anything that's got to do with the highway building has to come out of my budget, out of highway, um, which really isn't fair. But um, And then the transfer station takes care of their own building there. So, you know, basically 20000 20, to go ahead and take care of those three buildings. You know, the uh, oh yeah, in the library too. Forget about the library. The reason I'm asking this is because um, I I don't remember which meeting. There've been so many meetings in the past couple of weeks, but at one of them, I brought up the issue of the envelope at the, the old senior center building, and the fact that I went around the building with Peter Thomas and we photographed a bunch of the different problems. And um, when the um, Consultants were hired by this committee before I even was on the committee, and they did their study. They made a list of priorities in terms of, you know, urgent needs that should be addressed within the first year. You know, things that you know would be need to be addressed soon, and then you know things that would be ideal to you know have happen in the future. And you know, among those things was getting a you know a structural engineer to look at the steeple to make sure that the steeple problem, the tilting of the steeple, is is, is not getting worse, but that it was shored up at some point in time, and to make sure that it's stable and not getting worse. But with the senior center building, if you walk around the perimeter of it, there there are places where you can see where the water is going in, 
to the building. There's a gaping okay. hole near one of the doorways that goes through the asphalt down to the foundation, and there are some basement windows that are completely, you know, destroyed. That you know, water is obviously getting in through those places, and then the gutters on that um, canopy that um, goes over the handicapped access ramp. I mean, the lack of gutters. Um, the water is directed right towards the foundation of the building. So with any kind of a moisture problem, obviously, if you can dry it out as much as possible, then you know, you know how serious the problem is. But until those things are addressed, it's sort of an experiment. I mean, you don't know how bad it is, but the mold is getting worse you know, as we speak because those things haven't been done. So I have no idea how much it would cost to do those things. But it, when I brought it up at this meeting the other night, um, basically the response was that, you know, there isn't money to do it and that, you know, it's part of the bigger project. And in essence, it felt like I was being told that either the entire building needs to be completely renovated and everything needs to be done that is going to need to be done in the next 20 years or we're not going to do anything. But these are things that are going to build on themselves and get worse and worse. I mean, especially mm -hmm. with, with the mold. If, if, it, if there's mold in the basement and you address it right away, then you can keep it from getting up into the walls and making the entire building need to be gutted, maybe. But if if we just if we don't do something about that soon, it's you know it's obviously it's already been years, but it's going to get worse. So I don't know. That is the envelope. So uh, I'm. Okay. We can move forward with that. <clears throat> again, you know, it depends on what we got from because again, I don't have a whole lot of money to to be able to do what I need to do. And this is where I'm really kind of hoping that together as a group, we get together, we get a list. So this way I can go ahead and I can bring it forward to them and say, look at this is what it's gonna be costing us over the next you know, so many years per building. Um, and then we have to be able to get the funding for it. So in, in funding is difficult, you know, again, you look at sewer rates, you know, they're going to be, you know, figuring out what sewer rates going to be in two more nights. And I don't know what the percentage is going to be, you know, um, everything is costing us more and more and more money. You know, I'm looking at my budgets right now for the season, you know, we're not supposed to be above 2% right now. I'm about six and a half percent because of the cost of materials, you know, um, gasoline has gone out of sight. Everything has gone out of sight. So there's a lot of things that it eventually, I know everybody says, oh, well, it's easy to say, well, it's all about the money. Well, I tell you what, if you give me an open checkbook, I will make everything gold. But if I don't have an open checkbook, it's very difficult on what I can do with this little amount of money that I have. But that's why hopefully you guys collectively as a group, we're going to get together and you guys are all going to make my life a lot easier because you're going to help me along saying it's just not me saying this is what needs to be done. It's an entire group. It says this is what needs to be done. No, it's yeah. kind of fun watching you wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> I think the town has to decide what they're going to do with these buildings. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what are what. they going to be used for? Um, you know, maybe there won't be a need to renovate all of them. Maybe, I mean, we have to have a use for them before we can... <laughs> determine how we're going to renovate them. I agree. But to go along with what Greg said, yeah, I will definitely, I will definitely be going by there and looking to see what, what that other one was. You know, I was down there with one of the guys when they were looking at the, uh, the mold and they said that the cracked, the cracked windows, but he didn't bring any attention to any of the uh, water running into the building per se. So All right. I think we're to set a next meeting time and date. Um, so a month from today is the first of December. Um, you want to meet sometime that first week of December, say the week of the sixth. Is the first following to the first is a Wednesday, it looks like. I could 
do Wednesday afternoon. Wednesday the 8th would work out well for me. Well, I think, the, you know, we can yeah. do it sooner rather than close. How about the 1st? What's the 1st look like? Wednesday the 1st. For myself and Casey, we're in a, um, we'll be good after like 2.30, 3 o'clock. Okay. Um, so I got a waste, wastewater treatment um, progress meeting. We have to go through. How about Tuesday the 30th? Matt, we could have you appointed by then. How do you look? I'm good at this oh, point. That's not good for me. I take it back. How about Thursday, the second? Oh, man, I already started putting it in. Sorry. Thursday, the second. Thursday, the second. Does that, that work for anybody? Yeah. I'm good anytime after. After 2.30 p.m. Why well, shoot again for three o'clock? Does that work for everybody? Three o'clock on the yes. second. Twelve, twelve, two, fifteen hundred. And we'll do the same hybrid thingy. Yep, perfect. Okay. okay. All right. Matt, okay. on a serious note, would you like to join the committee? That's like put me on the spot. Yeah, I'll, I'll get involved. I'll do what I can to help. Julie, would you like to send a, uh, a note over to Casey and the chair of the uh, the select board and ask for an appointment? You betcha. Thank you. God, you right under the bus. Good. Right under the bus. Yeah, I appreciate that, buddy. You're welcome. Thanks, Matt. <laughs> appreciate it. Hey, no worries. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you got some cinder blocks. I need to jack up Donnie's cruiser and set it on cinder blocks. Sure, not a problem. Awesome. Kevin, did um, did Peter did you get a copy of the report that Peter Thomas put together that he sent to the, the select board was looking at about the um, and, uh, I believe the only thing that I have is the the drawing of that piece that he's making or, okay. or recreating, uh, and then I was told that I am going to give him a hand putting it in, and that's about my extent of knowledge. Okay, well, uh, I'll make sure that um, you have a copy. It, it, he photographed all these different specific things and was making suggestions of, you know, that I think were pretty helpful. So, okay, great. Uh, Perfect. Yeah, if you could forward that to me, I'd be, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Okay, so um, would you like to get together sometime in the next week or so, and I'll bring that, and we could walk around the building together? Sure. Um, yeah. Um, actually, you know what? Can you email me, and that way we can yeah, yeah, go course. ahead and figure out. Are, are you fairly flexible day wise, or? Yeah, yeah. I'll um, I'll right. email you sometime in the next day or two. Okay, yeah. If you email me tonight or tomorrow, that way I can get you on the schedule. That'd be worked out well. Excellent. Thanks. All right. Anything so, else Julie. Yeah, Julie, yeah. on a side note, we uh, we did sign a contract with UMass Boston uh, Gerontology Department. They will be doing okay. a needs assessment for a South County uh, seniors, Waitley, Sunderland, and Deerfield. Uh, we will be ramping that up in the next couple of weeks, and surveys will be going out, community meetings, uh, looking at regional senior centers across the state, and what the residents really would like to see, and then ultimately what we can afford in South County. So we are starting down that path now. Nice. Thanks for that update. Yep. Anything else we need to talk about? All right, do we have a motion to adjourn? John, I'll make the motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Right. Any discussion? Roll call vote. Greg Franceschi, aye. Julie Chalf and I. Carol Morrow, aye. John Petrork, aye. Kevin Scarborough, aye. All right.